Hi, I'm Brian Forsley. I'm a nephrologist in the Interior Health Authority Renal Program. Hello, I'm Jerry Carr. I too am a nephrologist, now retired, and a previous director for the Interior Health Authority Renal Program. And throughout my career, I've been very interested in patient-centered care. Patient-centered care describes a way that physicians engage with patients in a therapeutic relationship. It sees the relationship between doctor and patient as a two-way street. The physician offers a care plan only after carefully seeking to understand the patient's unique illness experience and to be guided by the patient's values and preferences. Then, together, they reach a shared decision. To better understand the interaction between patient and physician, it is important to appreciate the differences between their roles. The patient feels unwell and seeks help from the physician. He trusts the physician to help him, but he also holds information that only he knows how he feels about being ill, what he thinks might be the cause, how it affects his ability to function, what will happen to him, and what can possibly be done to help. He also brings family, social, cultural, and spiritual values and beliefs that influence his goals and expectations. The physician brings her expertise to the relationship. She also needs key information. She needs to understand the patient's illness experience in order to make an accurate diagnosis and consider realistic options for a care plan. A free exchange of information between them will enable the best understanding by each of the nature of the problem and the treatment options. This then lays the groundwork for agreement on the best possible approach to treatment. What we mean by a patient-centered relationship is one that balances the right of the patient to control over his treatment against the physician's expertise and rights as a professional and as an individual. It is a relationship of trust rooted in autonomy on both sides. The patient trusts the physician to act always in his best interest, while the physician trusts the patient to cooperate fully in sharing information, just like you would consult with your lawyer or accountant. This trust enables shared decision-making, a core element of patient-centered care. Truly patient-centered care, in fact, leads to better decisions. It is simply the right thing to do to respect patient autonomy. This means the patient's right to understand and to agree to what treatment they receive. It continues with collaboration between the patient and the entire care team. It is important to emphasize that the patient's family and loved ones are a key part of patient-centered care to the extent that they are an important part of the patient's life. Dr. Forsley is now going to close with remarks about how advanced care planning and medical orders for scope of treatment relate to each other and how patient-centeredness helps each of these processes. This idea of the patient and physician working together to establish the care plan should be present every time a care plan is established. It is especially important when considering situations that involve critical illness, life support, and the end of life. Healthcare practitioners are more routinely asking patients about whether they have an advanced care plan that clarifies their values, beliefs, and wishes around their medical care. Sometimes, patients or physicians will have very specific ideas of what treatments should or should not be involved in a particular situation, which raises the important question of how these decisions ought to be made. This diagram brings together the responsibilities the patient and the physician each have and the means by which advanced care planning, goals of care, and medical orders for scope of treatment inform each other. Patients are responsible for being able to articulate their beliefs, values, and wishes for future health care. And they are encouraged to speak to family and friends as well as their family doctor about them and also encouraged to document them ideally with an advanced directive or a representation agreement. This type of activity is called advanced care planning. Both the patient and the healthcare team then have a responsibility to work out the goals of care, which basically tries to be more clear and precise on what all the tests and treatments are ultimately trying to achieve for the patient. 
Goals of care could have a medical nuance, like the goal of curing a disease or relieving a particular symptom. But the main goal could be much more personal, like keeping a person alive to see their grandson's graduation or improving a disability in order to get to a daughter's wedding. The physician would offer a treatment plan to achieve these goals, which the patient can choose to consent to or decline. But the physician is also responsible for communicating to the other physicians and staff a particular part of the overall plan of care that describes the degree of treatment and interventions to be provided if the patient gets sick, and especially during critical illness or end-of-life type situations. This communication is called Medical Orders for Scope of Treatment, also called MOST, to create a good plan of care that is likely to be both effective and achieve the patient's goals. The most important message is for the patient to be sure that all important documents, like advanced directives and the physician medical order for scope of treatment, are placed in a protective folder and kept in a prominent place, like on the fridge door, to be available to healthcare providers at the time of critical need. In an ideal world, the patient and the physician would always reach agreement on the treatment plan. But what happens when that ideal is not reached? First, it is important to emphasize that the patient has the right to accept or decline any treatment that is offered. The patient must understand and give consent to the proposed treatment before it's given. But another scenario occurs when a patient requests investigations or treatment that the physician feels is unreasonable because it will cause harm or because it will not achieve the wished for result. Patient-centered care requires the physician to act always in the best interest of the patient. It does not require the physician to order an investigation or treatment that she believes will not serve her patient. While this may seem contrary to the concept of patient-centered care, patient-centered care clearly defines the rights of the patient to be fully informed and to consent to treatment. It does not override the rights of the physician to decline a request that would cause harm or be ineffective. The most important message here is that patient-centered care, through effective and respectful communication, will maximize the chances of coming to an agreement on the best way ahead even in the most difficult situations where end-of-life decisions must sometimes be made, sometimes in moments of great urgency. As well, in the event of a disagreement, a patient-centered approach will preserve trust between the patient and physician. The patient will still feel respected and well understood, and hopefully a therapeutic relationship will be maintained. So to summarize, Patient-centered care describes a way that physicians engage with patients in a therapeutic relationship. Patient-centered care has the physician consider not just the disease, but the patient's life situation and their values, beliefs, and goals, and also emphasizes that both the patient and the physician bring something important to the encounter. Patient-centered care enables information sharing in a trusting relationship to ensure patients and healthcare providers are building the right plan of care even in the most difficult of situations and even if an agreement can't be fully reached.